Okay, very important. Second Samuel chapter three, verse twenty-one. And something that needs to be delicately read. And Abner, that's Saul's side, said unto David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel into my, unto my Lord the king. So there's unity, there's gathering. Israel's coming under David, under Abner. They're going to receive David as their king. There's been a split. There's been Ishpanish, the son of Saul, set up by Abner. But And that thou mayest reign over all that thy heart desired. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop. So Joab was out in the field with the soldiers. Joab returned and brought in a great spoil with him. But Abner was not, was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. So David finished with Abner. He says, go. Go ahead, gather everybody together. Bring them under my authority. There's been no charges there's no fault it went in peace gone in peace and when Joab and all the hosts that was with him were come they told Joab saying Abner the son of Ner came to the king and he sent him away and he is gone in peace three times three verses went in peace gone in peace Gone in peace. I would think Abner is no guilt before David. And there was, <clears throat> the guilt is gone. Because he did set up Ishmael to be against David. So Abner has made his peace and his faults before the king, David. And in peace, in peace, in peace. That's important. Then Joab came to the king and said, What hast thou done? <laughs> what nerve? Walks up to the king. What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it thou, thou hast sent him away? Where is the in peace? Knows what Joab has removed. From the Bible. In peace. Whether well, went in peace, gone in peace. Joab removes in peace. And he is quite gone. Well, he don't know that. Maybe just how long it's been. I mean, Abner could have stopped off and was tired and got, went for a rest for a while. You don't know. But we've got to remember, Joab is angry with Abner. We'll look at it in a moment why. Thou knowest Abner the son of Ner, that he came to deceive. He came to deceive thee. No, he didn't. He came to bring the kingdom of Israel and Judah together under David. And to know thy going out and thy coming in. He is accusing Abner of being a spy and working still against David. And to know all that thou doest. That's a lie. So he's removed the word of God and now he's lying. And when Joab was come out from David. It doesn't say no peace. <laughs> Abner came out in peace, in peace, in peace. He sent messengers, Joab, after Abner. Which brought him again. From the well of Syrah. He stopped at a well, getting a drink, resting. But David knew it not. Joab goes before the king, that guy, he's a liar, 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 Joab. He steps out from the throne of David, go get Abner and bring him over here now. 
Yes, sir. Does David know? Nope. David knew it not. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, he had Abner go wherever Abner was at this well. He turned them around and brought them all the way back. Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly. There's one only one other place that word quietly is Lamentations 3.21. There are no witnesses. It's Joab and Abner alone in a gate. It doesn't even say it's a city gate, just a gate. So it would be like a little concave, curved little section of the wall. Hey, come here, step in here for a minute. And smoke him there under the fifth rib. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Under the fifth rib. Now, okay, now. Let's go back to chapter 2, and let's look at verse 18. We're going to take these scriptures kind of slowly. In 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 18, there was three sons of Zeruiah. That's, that's an important name for this chapter. Two, and where we're at now. Zeruiah. It's a good good trivia question we already know Zariah first Chronicles 2 6 12 to 16 that is David's sister and another sister they have is Abigail there Joab, Joab there's our character Abishai and Asahel I think my wife said they're cousins something like that if their mothers or sisters if their mothers or sisters, Zer Zeruiah is David's sister. I got that part down. I thought they would be nephews or something. I don't know. All right, so Joab, Abishai, and Asahel. Now let's put our focus on Asahel. And Asahel was light on foot and as a wild roe. Man, he could run. Asahel pursued after Abner. Oh, there's our other character. Something like that. Someone can email me and I'll know that you're watching. And in going, he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. Asahel is chasing Abner. There's a war. It's been proclaimed. In verse 13, And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and the servants they went out and met together by the pool of Gibeon, and sat down in the one on the one side of the pool, and the one on the other side of the pool. And Abner said to Joab, let the young men rise and play before us. And Joab said, let them arise. That's silver war. That playing is sword play. It's war game. A war has declared. Now Abishai has come behind Abner in battle. And if he were to kill Abner, man, he could get Abner's clothes of spoil and say, look at me. I got the general of Ishbanesh and the children of Benjamin, I got the military commander. And if you ever played Rook, when you get that commander, that's it, the game's over. So here is Asahel chasing Abner. We're not going to read, you can go back and get the video or the sound. In verse 23 of chapter 2, how about how be it he, Asahel, Refuse to turn aside. Wherefore Abner, with the hinder end of the spear, smote him under the fifth rib. That's the first time that showed up. That the spear came out behind him. And he fell down there and died in the same place. Verse 26, And Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? Verse 27. And Joab said, As God liveth, unless thou hast spoken, surely then in the morning the people had gone up, every one from following his brother. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still. Peace has come to the end of this war. Abner, the military leader of Saul, Joab, the military leader of David, had called the truth. 
in between the time let the men go play have war games, Asahel is killed by Abner under the fifth rib during wartime. So we are told in the chapter we are studying today, chapter 3, finishing it up, Abner, before the king of all Israel, David, is in peace, in peace, in peace. Joab removes in peace and lies about him. He sends for Abner and says, bring that boy back here to Hebron. Calls him off in a little cubbyhole kind of place where there's nobody to speak quietly. Don't tell anybody. And smote him there under the fifth rib where his brother was killed by Abner by that spear under the fifth rib. For, now watch, for the blood of Asahel, his brother. Joab's motive, Joab's revenge of Abner is because Abner killed his brother in wartime. There is no war now. And you will get into what thou shalt not kill. The Bible has already spoken. Nothing wrong with Abner for killing Asahel in battle. But the Lord will have much to say about Joab. Killing a man. Without battle. And the coward Joab takes this man quietly off into some spot. And then uh, Abner has no idea what's going to happen. Verse 28. Now watch. And afterward when David heard it. He said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord. That's Jehovah. Forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. David, here's what happens. It ain't me. I had nothing to do with the death of Abner, even though Joab is under my authority. Joab has rebelled against the government. He has killed. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Joab has definitely killed. Remember God told us in the law, I believe it's the book of Numbers, when you were to take that uh, that red heifer, you're going to burn her ashes and put her ashes in the water of separation. So when the men go out in battle and they touch anything dead, they shall have seven days rest and then wash themselves. And I think it's three more days. Well, God never said anything wrong as far as those men going out in the battlefield. When God said, when Joshua, when you cross that land and you cross the Jordan River, go in there and wipe them all out. Kill them, women and children. And men, cows, everything. But he says, if with hatred, we're not going to look at those verses today. He says, with hatred, with enmity that you had against him, even if it was an accident. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. The New Testament says, John says in First John. There is definitely hatred here. Of Joab to Abner for killing his brother. And he does. He does the mode of the avenger of blood. But there is no murder. Notice how Abner has not gone to the cities. Of refuge. He doesn't need it. It was in combat. My question is for David. Why did he not have Joab. Stoned to death for murder. We're going to find out in a moment why. And it's one big mess. Now remember that the sin of Bathsheba, it, it's, it's many chapters away from here. We have no thought of David going to kill a man himself. So you can't say, Joab, you know, because David, you did. No, that, that, that's, if the rapture happens right now, we will never get to the Bathsheba event and her husband. But I want you to know that Abner is in peace. He's in peace. He's in peace. 
and he's murdered. And if you got a religious organization and you don't want to go to combat because the Bible says thou shalt not kill, that does not go for the armed forces. If you are given a, a command by your leader to shoot those people, those are orders. Romans 13, those people that gave the orders, they will be held accountable. Because there's a bunch of cowards that runs around and go knocking on your door. I tell you about Jesus is not God. We're going to go through the tribulation. You go through the tribulation, you cowards. Abner is a full military servant. And look what happens. So David, verse 28. Guiltless. Joab did that on his own merit. And we'll keep reading. Let it rest on the head of Joab. Oh, and on all his father's house. Do you know what he just said there? First Chronicles 2.12. Now you have to be careful in this little judgment here. First Chronicles 2.12. Now, who is Joab's mother? Name. Zariah. Okay. So, First Chronicles 2, 12. And Boaz beget Obed, and Obed beget Jesse. We know who they are, correct? Ruth chapter 4. And Jesse beget the firstborn, Aleb, and Abinadab the second, and Shema the third, Nethiel the fourth, Radadai the fifth, Ozum the sixth, David the seventh. Can you imagine poor Jesse's mother got to call these boys in with those? Whose sisters were Zariah and Abigail, the sons of Zariah. Abish Notice how he never mentions this, the father's name. It names David's sister. Usually they say the, the, the son of, and it's a man's name. The sons of Zariah, Abishai. Joab, there he is, Joab and Asahel, only three. Only three. So when David says here, all his father's house, who is he talking about? He's talking about his sister's husband. Is not Zariah his sister? So he says, cursed be Joab and his father's house. I don't know how any idea what that would be a relation of Zariah's husband to David. Brother-in-law, I would think. Yeah. Brother-in-law. So David, I have a hard time with those, I apologize. David puts a curse on his brother-in-law's house. And it gets worse. He had to been careful there. And that would be the only time I could find, if you could find anywhere else, that it is mentioned Joab's father at all, because usually it's Uriah. And the only time to be mentioned of, da of Joab's father is when David said, I curse your father in the family. On his father's house, that would also include his sister. He's married to his sister, and she has three children. One of them has died in battle. One of them is a murderer now. We're not done. And let there not fall, fail, excuse me, let there not fail from the house of Joab. One that has an issue, bleeding, open wounds, pus, infection, gangrene, you name it. Remember in the law issue, you were unclean. You know what David just said? You're unclean, you stay unclean. You stay look, look, look at them you know people say that you know Jesus Christ love you know yes he is but David's the type of Jesus Christ and look at the anger and the Bible records that Jesus got mad you Pharisees you scribes you snakes you snake in the grass you serpents what you do David is angry and the Bible says sin not he's not sinning do you see the attitude that David has for Joab, what he just did to Abner? He never got mad at Abner. What if it came up during that, that feast? David, I'm real sorry about Asahel, you know. Maybe he's playing the whole story. 
Well, that was wartime. It, it happened. Did you warn them, didn't you? Yeah, I told them two or three times. Well, then it's his fault. What fault has Abner done? As far as eyes of the law of God, nothing. And we're not done. Or that is a leper. That was serious. You're outside the gates in that one. You got your finger underneath your nose. Unclean, unclean. David says, you stay unclean. Don't even give him money. Or that leaneth. That's the first time that word shows up. Leaneth. And the other place, the only other place is 2 Kings 5.18. That leaneth on a, step, on a staff. What's that? That's a man using a cane. I use a cane. You see anybody using a cane to help themselves walk and stay up and not fall down? That's what David's talking about. That would be elderly or people who are uh, disabled. David says, with you guys too. Now there had to be people in his family, his family, David's family, that were like this. Because why would he mention all these people? But we're going to learn. Later on, there is a crippled boy. And David's going to, I can never remember his name. I thought, Jonathan's son. And David's going to show him love and care. But the outright sinner, there's no mercy. And or that falls on the sword. Um... If we go back over here to 1 Samuel 31, I think, 1 Samuel 31, 5. I don't know, but let's look at the wording. 1 Samuel 31, 5. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise on his sword. The last part of verse 4. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. <laughs> David knew that an Amalekite was lying when he said, I took a spear and slayed him. I knew Saul killed himself. I got the words. So he goes right back to Saul's house. But we're talking about Joab. And that fallen by the sword, what we saw, could either be wartime or it could be suicide. And I think in the group of the leper and he that leaned, I would probably lean to the fact is suicide. Or that lack of bread, starving. Man, he's described many of the homeless people. Now watch this. Are we ready? So Joab and Abisai, his brother, slew Abner. Let's go back to 27, verse 27. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib, and he died. Where was Abishai? We're going to look at one place. You're going to say, why on earth are we there? And we're going to look at another place. Matthew 5, 28. Matthew 5, 20. I know this one's going to be way out of context, but we're not talking about the context of the sin. We're talking about something else. Matthew 5, 28. I know some people would get hung up on this. But let's look at the context of Matthew 5, 28. But I say unto you, Jesus speaking, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, to lust after her, after her, has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now, there's no adultery. But it wouldn't that person be thinking about doing something? And Jesus said that thinking is your acting. Your thought of adultery committed adultery. You know what Abishai was doing? He was thinking about killing him. Joab beat him. And God and David say, just because you thought about it, now another place, 1 Kings 21, 8. 
First Kings 21 8. It's called responsibility. This is Jezebel, Naboth, and Ahab. Verse 8. She wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in the city dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast, set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king. Notice the lie. Joab lied. And then carry him out and stone him, that he may die. And the men of the city, even the elders and the nobles were, who were in the inhabitants of the city, his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as is written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. And then they came there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king, a lie, Joab. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Now, let's go down to verse 17. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, Jezebel's husband, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he's in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed? No, he didn't. Jezebel. Yet the husband of the wife is held responsible for the crime. Remember we talked about a couple days ago, and for whatever reason, your wife can't go with you witnessing on the streets and those that tarry by the stuff. God says she'll get the reward just as much as her husband got the reward or her son. Asahel, I mean, excuse me, Abishai and Joab were both thinking about killing Abner for killing their brother. Only Joab physically did it. Abishai thought about it. And David, through the Holy Spirit, says both of them killed Abner. Now, let me tell you, Christians. Let me tell you, children. I've done this when I grew up. You get angry at your parents, you want them dead. You get angry, you, you want your boss dead. Or you want that guy to cut you off dead. You want somebody dead. You better, First John 1, 9, you better repent of those sins. Because even though you didn't do it, your thoughts make you do it. We are guilty by our thoughts, not actions only. If Jesus said a man commits adultery without lying in a bed, without lying with that woman, and you think about killing somebody, you're a murderer. That's a charge. So Joab and Abishai, his brothers, slew Abner because he had slain their brother, Asahel, at Gibnia, in the battle. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thou shalt not kill does not apply to wartime. You see your religion fighting around that one. And David said to Joab, ah, man, he confronts Joab, and to all the people that were with him, the army, David's soldiers, he says to Joab, rend your clothes and gird you with sackcloth. I guarantee that was the last thing Job would want to do. Uh, Joab. And mourn before Abner. Not Joab, not Abishai. And the king David himself followed the bier. That's a coffin. Let's go to Luke 7, 14. Let's see a type of Jesus Christ. We're going to see Jesus again. But Luke 7, 14. The Bible is so wonderful. You can't miss Jesus in your testament. The 
714. Luke 714. This is not the place. 714? They came to pass and touched the beer. Oh, you know what? Understood. I'm in Mark. You gotta be in the right book. Amazing what happens when you're in the wrong book. I've done that many times. You're like, what on earth? Oh, I'm in the total wrong book. All right. And he came and touched the beer. That means he's behind it. Like David was. He wasn't with it. He had to come to it. And they that bear it stood still. And he said, young man, I would assume Abner's a young man. He can go out and kill and run. He can run with a man that's chasing him and take his spear and kill him from behind. But there's Jesus and David at the beer. That's not alcohol beverage. That's a coffin. David's at the funeral procession. They just didn't have cars. <laughs> I don't know if they had camels, donkeys, or they walked. And they buried Abner in Hebron. He didn't go far. I wonder if David wanted him his tombstone right by him. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. Do you remember somewhere else where Jesus was at a grave and the Bible records Jesus wept? John eleven thirty five. Abner and David are friends. David is really distraught that his friend has been killed. Lazarus and Jesus were best friends. And when Jesus saw all the family and all the people upset that he had died, the Bible says he wept. At the grave of Abner, where was Jesus? He was at the grave of Lazarus, wasn't he? And all the people wept. So let, let's go look at John 11. Let's go read that and see what David. I'm in the right book, John. John 11. I think we want. There you go. I want to read from chapter 9. Yeah, contact. So, verse 32. John eleven thirty-two. 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and she saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. That's not the case with Abner. Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And he said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. It's like back here, everybody's weeping. David's a type of Jesus Christ. Now we don't know how Lazarus died. You can't press a type 100%. And the king lamented over Abner, as Jesus lamented over Lazarus. And said, died Abner as a fool died. Now you would think, that's rude. But look, when Abner was returned from Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly, and smote him there under the fifth rib. The guy's a military soldier. He's a commander of an army. He should have saw something coming. He should have had an idea. Why would Abner, I mean, why would Joab want to meet me secretly? Does this have to do with his brother? Thy hands were not bound. He was not a prisoner of war. He was not in handcuffs. Nor thy feet put in feathers. You know, the chains that go around your feet. As a man falleth before wicked men. Look at look at, look at what David called Joab. Wicked men. 
Remember, both he and his brother are being charged by David. So, Phyllis, the only place that word shows up, thou. You fell down before Joab and it should never have happened. You never saw it coming. And all the people wept again over him. When all the people came to cause David to eat meat. All right, David, come on. Let's go home. Let's get something to eat. While it was yet day, David swears, saying, So do God to me. There's an oath. And more also, if I taste bread, or else till the sun be down. See, if I eat anything now until the sun goes down, I'm not going to. I am not going to look like I'm having a celebration. I am not going to look like I am feasting at this moment. I am not feasting. I am not celebrating. My heart is broken. And all the people took notice. The only other place that shows up is in 2 Corinthians 9, 5, notice. They all looked at David like, it's not his fault. He did not order it. And it pleased them. Not pleased them that Abner's dead, but our king did not do that order. Our king had nothing to do with it. As whatsoever the king did, pleased all the people. So David again behaves himself wisely. For all the people in all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to slay Abner, the son of Ner. And the king said unto his servants, Know ye not that there is a prince and a great man falleth this day in Israel, Abner. Prince. He was second in command of Ishbanit's kingdom. That's a prince. And I am this day weak. Now watch this. I am this day weak. Though anointed king, I'm anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zeruiah, my sister. My kin, my family, my nephews. Be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. So Joab will get killed. I believe it's, also, it's either by a sword or by a spear. And if I remember correctly, he's at the tabernacle. He goes and grabs hold of those horns. Well, God be gracious to me because I'm touching the holy altar. And, and uh, Solomon says, no, you kill him. Joab will be murdered, but rightfully, as he murdered Abner. All I got to think it had to do with the fan. That's the only thing I could point at. Because he had the law. He could say, listen, he killed... But then there's something else. In 27, there was no one else there, and the law says you have to have two witnesses. That could be the only cause that David could not bring it to court. There was no one that saw it. The only one that saw it, he's dead. The only one that saw it, that's Joab. And if that's the case, David abided by the law 100%, even though it made him mad. Because the law prescribed you needed at least two or three, if not more, witnesses. Come to think about it. And we're not done. Chapter 4. It's going to happen again. David. His life. Was not easy. His life was rough. And God said a man after my own heart. So if anybody ever tells you. Oh as a Christian all that. Your life is going to be wonderful. Look at David. Look at Paul. Look at Joseph. Were their lives wonderful and great and great? Turn that guy off. 